Welcome to Biggest Little Library. It's Tammy, Taryn, and Amy here yeah. with your Friday Four. Four recommendations we think you'll love. That's awesome. Hi, Taryn. Hello. What you got over there? I have Serum by Edward Rutherford. This is about Salisbury, and it's another saga. But this is the one that I've read that I enjoyed more than Pillars of the Earth, and it covers a greater period of time. Um, and... I think that it's also another really large book for people who like (laughs) sagas. And if you're interested in Salisbury and Salisbury Cathedral, this is the one that I would recommend. Like it's not full of breasts? It's not. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Sorry, Ken. Well, it's also, it was also written in the eighties and it's also written by man. So I'm not saying it's like free of that issue, but But it's a little less breasty. It's a little less breasty. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> And is it a total deep dive into Sarum? It is. So for those who don't know, Edward Rutherford picks a place, often like a city or a specific location, and he starts at the beginning of that place. Like that the sounds first like, people um, that settled there. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like Michener. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then he picks like, I think Sarum has seven families, and you kind of... Um, Forrest Gump your way through the history okay. where the families are always involved mm-hmm. in whatever the important historical event was Okay, um, through it and he very helpfully provides like family trees and stuff and so you go from in Sarum like the founding of like the very first settlement through past the cathedral wow yeah. so it's quite a length of time like more than a thousand years oh my gosh yeah that's an endeavor I don't even know how you start writing that I know. I Mm kind of wonder people like Michener and who's this guy, Rutherford? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, how do you, that's a real commitment to a place. And he actually writes like fairly fast for how much historical detail like he would have to learn. Yeah. Like he just, I think his new one is China and it didn't come out. I mean, you'd expect like 12 years between Mm -hmm. books, but it didn't take that long. Does he have people, I wonder if he has people helping him with their research or... Yes, he, librarians, I betcha. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay, so Sarum. Yeah. All right. That looks awesome. Tams, I noticed you pulled off a real oldie off I my did. shelf. I did. This real, you know, when we take pictures of this, this is really going to resonate with people my age <laughs> and older because it's just so old fashioned, but it is, um, it's Silent Spring by Rachel Carson, and it was actually <laughs> printed before I was born. Oh. Published in 1962. Well, I'd like to say welcome to the Reno High Library <laughs> where we have books that are older than us. True story. Well, and this is really the first book about environmentalism. So mm-hmm. it is a seminal, you know, text text that you would you would keep, you know, yeah. maybe an updated version has, you know, color or picture on the cover. <laughs> but, I know it's just um, wrapped in blue linen. It's like, yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, but it, and I have to say, I did look at the card in our little Ellie that we know. We yeah, her mom. She was the last one to check it out, so that's kind of cute. But um, I chose it because when I spoke earlier this week about Prodigal Summer, there was a character yeah. named for Rachel Carson. She was Ra- Rachel Aww. Carson Folly in there. So. And because that was such a um, wonderful work of eco-fiction, I thought it would be great to just remind people of Rachel Carson, who grew up in Pennsylvania, and nature was just a part of her childhood, and um, she became a biologist, and her book really talks about contemporary environmentalism, and it's all all over it doesn't have pages. a lot of um, curb appeal on that particular no. copy. No. I mean, would that be a fair... Terrence I mean, there's because, some good Art Deco font, but that's really it. Yeah. yeah it's think, a it's an oldie, but a goodie. Right. So, And I think it's... I think it's very interesting because she talks about sort of the chemicals that were being used. Yeah. And what they they thought they were so fantastic, but then years later, I'm thinking of DDT and the mm-hmm. eagle eggs that became soft and, you know, our national bird was almost extinct. So right. it really is an interesting text to look back at environmentalism. And it took a woman, hello, thank you, thank you, to bring it to the attention of the rest of the world. Okay. Well... I have two because my mom ducked out on us, as you know, so I'm going to do hers and mine. That's great. And basi- well, actually, I'm just going to wrap them up. These are two that she told me I can read because I can't find a book for her to read because I've given her all the books <laughs> right. and she reads them all. And then right. I have the stack that she tells me because I'm a busy 
busy little librarian. So yes. the first one that she has been dying for me to read is called The Paris Architect. Have either of you read it or heard it? Heard I of it? Heard I've of heard of it. it. So it's by Charles uh, Belfour. And it's basically, okay, here's why I have not read it. Because you know that I deep dived and I went crazy into World War II historical fiction. <laughs> yes. Right? And I loved it. And I read like so many different titles, but I kind of like, it's like, okay, here's how I can put this to you. When I was about fifth grade, I went to stay with my Aunt Thora. And she I love Aunt Thora. I love the Aunt Thora too. Mm-hmm. And she was great because she didn't have any daughters. So she'd spoil me when I come see her. And we'd always go to the mall because she loves to shop. And we went by this little candy thing. And she's like, oh, you want to get some gummy bears? Those were new back in the oh, day. Okay. Like they weren't out until like then. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, she bought me a pound of gummy bears. And I ate the whole thing. And guess what? You threw up? No, no, I wish. I have never wanted another gummy bear since. Oh, there you go. So that's what I did with World War II historical fiction. I just read, 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 read. And now I'm like, oh, I just don't want to do it again. I don't know why. I just feel like the gummy bear, like, oh, I want to push it away. Right. So I have to like get over that because I do love historical fiction. And this is about an architect who takes on... Um, a job for a Jewish man and and he wants to him to build a hiding place for him that no German can find him. Yes, I love it. So I'm intrigued by it mm-hmm. because I do, and I've heard it's so awesome. And then I got it this year for Christmas from our book exchange. Oh, I love that. And I just started to kind of giggle. So it's sitting underneath my uh, coffee table as we speak right now. So that's nice. the first one. My mom is like, you have to read it. And I'm like, oh, I just pushed it away. So I probably should listen to my mom because she's always right. Right. And then the second one is also another one that was given to me like two Christmases ago Mm -hmm. in that same book exchange called The Chilberry Ladies Choir by Jennifer Ryan. And then our friend Debbie from Washoe County gave us the ARC. And so I handed it off to my mom because, you know, I can't keep her in books fast enough. And she read it and she loved it so much. That she said in her little um, sister's like text group, she's mm-hmm. like, everybody has to read it. So everybody bought it and was reading it. And I'm giggling because I'm like, it really fell into my hands first. And I found it because I'm a, I love books written in letters. Oh, right. Oh, epistolary. epistolary. Yes. Yeah. I'm a big, big epistolary fan. I mean, I can't, I probably have five books sitting on my shelf that I own that are written in letters. I just think it's an intriguing way to tell a story. Mm-hmm. And so this one again is, um, it's set, it's an epistolary novel. So it's set in London or not in London, but it's set in England and it's supposed to be amazing. And I can't tell you more than that because I haven't read it yet, but it's supposed to be awesome. And it it's is. letters. So second world war again. His, it, historical fiction. That's okay. great. <laughs> so, so there you go. Those are my two titles for you. Wonderful. For other great book recommendations, check out our blog on our website at biggestlittlelibrary.net. <laughs> and if you're on Apple Podcasts, click right here in the show notes to head over to our website. While you're there, make sure you sign up for our newsletter. And join us Tuesday for we don't know exactly yet what kind of <laughs> episode, but... <laughs> But it'll be something. And it'll be great. And it'll have books. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And remember, all these books are listed in our show notes. See See you in the stacks. stacks.